Father, as we are gathered here on this Sunday morning in this season of Advent, we pray that you would continue to prepare our hearts. We know that apart from the work of your Spirit, that we're just going to be forever caught up in the, the doings and the happenings. But we pray that at least in these moments that we would be stirred to, to higher things, to different things, that we would move beyond mere wants and desires to those holy longings. Uh, holy Spirit, we acknowledge that you are the true teacher and pray that you would continue to instruct our minds and our hearts and that our lives would be changed, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to do something a little bit differently this morning, so a little more uh, participation on your part. So we're going to begin with two things. Uh, the first thing is I would like for you to, to think of someone that you would like to spend Christmas with. Uh, the caveat is uh, the person needs to be alive because we're not resurrecting anybody from the dead. And uh, the second thing is it's somebody that you're not already planning to have Christmas with. Okay? So somebody you would love to spend Christmas with, living and currently not scheduled to be at your house. <laughs> Choose one. Do you have somebody in mind? The second thing is, I would like for you to think of a gift you would love to receive. And dream big, okay? Money is not an object. Money is not an object. That may be the harder of the two, right? It is. It's okay, you're up to it. Okay, time's over. So I would like to know who you would like to invite. I don't want to know the person's name. Uh, I would like for you to tell me what the relationship is. So it's uh, mom, dad, sibling, uh, friend, cousin, whatever it is. So what are kind of the, the relations of the people you would love to spend Christmas with? Your sister. Niece, brother. Niece, brother. Friend. Family member. Family member, okay. That way you can, you can just weave a lot into that. I like that. You're a smart kid. Anybody else? Little brother. Little brother. Okay. We're going we're gonna to take friends uh, because not all of us have siblings. Uh, not all of us uh, for a variety of reasons because we're going to build on this. So we'll take friend. Uh, so what kind of gift would you love to receive? And if you tell me it's a fruitcake or a chia pet, I know you're lying, just so you know. So, so what would be that, that big gift? Trip to where? Trip to Aruba. Okay. Don't be shy. Come on. To have everything that you want done. Boom. Okay. Throw down the gauntlet. A round of golf at St. Andrews. Okay. A new kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> we will work on marriage reconciliation later this afternoon. <laughs> okay, anybody else want to add one to the mix before it really gets out of control? A cruise, you want to go a cruise ship? Okay. Your mortgage paid off. <laughs> You're the practical one of the family. I love that. Okay, last one. Oh, to have it end before it gets too crazy. Oh, you take all the fun out of it. <laughs> okay, how do I choose among those? Wow. I'm going to do the round of golf at St. Andrews. No, I didn't share mine. <laughs> so, so with that, Mark, it's not only a round of golf, but it's the airfare, of course. Nice accommodations. Okay. So we're going to build a story around this now, okay? So later this afternoon, as you're watching the Patriots trounce the Bengals, it could happen, you, 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 get, you, get, a, a call, you get a text from your, your best friend. 
and says, uh, can we talk? And so you press that little icon on your phone, and, and you, can, you can hear the excitement in, should we do male or female? We're not doing his, her the whole time. There. there? No, we're not doing there. <laughs> Grammatically, that just, that just drives what we'll do. So you can hear the excitement in, in her voice. So, something good has happened. And there's that little pregnant pause, and then it's like, my plans have changed, and I want to know if I can come to your house for Christmas. And you're like, uh, yes, um, we'd love to have you come and spend Christmas with us. And so she tells you it's going to be the, she's going to arrive on the 23rd of December. And so you finish up the, the conversation, and, and you sink back into the couch with this big smile on your face as Brady throws that third touchdown pass of the game. And uh, it's not necessarily because of that, because you're thinking to yourself that uh, this is shaping up to be a wonderful Christmas. Uh, It's now the 23rd of December, and you get a text from your best friend, and it says, can we talk? And you call her. And again, there's this pregnant pause, and dejected, she says, I'm sorry to tell you, I can't come. Uh, There's been a situation at work, All of us are now having to work through the holidays. I'd really love to come. I feel badly letting you know at the last moment. I hope that you forgive me. And of course, you don't want to make the situation worse than it is. You say, there's no reason to forgive. I know you'd be here if you could. Uh, Let's plan to get together early 2020. You let me know what your schedule is. Just give me a few weeks and we'll make it happen. And before she hangs up and says, uh, be on the lookout, Christmas Day, uh, something special is going to happen. So it's December 25th, you wake up, and December 25th, whatever household you live in is busy. You know, it's friends and family and food and food, and there's the gifts given and receiving, and, you know, hopefully there's a crackling fire and all kinds of other things. So late in the afternoon, you hear a knock on the door, and you're like, maybe she came. Maybe things turn out she got that last flight out and Christmas Day and it's a little late, but better late than never. And and you look out and it's a guy with a little hat and a little vest on. Um, Got a package to drop off. uh, He says, this is for you. And you sign for it and you open it up. And oh my goodness, it is a trip to play golf at St. Andrews. First class Flight, first class accommodations, five star dining for one entire week. How would you feel? What's that? I don't even think you'd say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy new golf clubs on the way there. I won't taint the course with my old ones. So, how would you feel if that story were true? Would you be uh, grateful? Of course you would. Uh, would you feel a little bit uncomfortable? Some of you would. I think so. In our friendships, we like to have an equal position, and if somebody gave us such a lavish gift, then we would feel somehow indebted, and how in the world am I ever going to give them a gift that even comes close to what they've given me? How about sad? Sad. I know some of us would say, I would take a lavish gift (laughs) and a delayed time with my best friend than than to have uh, Christmas uh, with that best friend. But I think many of us would say, no, what presents are wonderful, but what matters most day in and day out is the presence of those people in our lives. Long introduction, but let's make a few connections. When we think about heaven... What is it that we long for? Is it uh, to be reunited with those family members and friends who have departed in the faith? Is it that we desire that finally we're going to be free of anxiety and and fear and addiction and all the other things that that impact our lives? Or maybe as we think about heaven, there's that, that verse from Revelation chapter 21 that often comes to the forefront of our minds where it says that he, speaking of God, is going to wipe away every tear from our eyes, that there will be no more mourning and death 
and sorrow and pain, and we say, yes, please, I would like a little of that or a lot of that. And depending on what's going on in our lives, there are moments in our lives where we deeply long for those things. And other times, as we noted last week, it's like, well, that can wait because there's a whole lot of good things going on. But here's the challenging thing. Are those the things that really make heaven so heavenly? You know, is it grand reunions, the absence of pain, the cessation of tears, and all those things and more that make heaven so heavenly? Would it sound strange if I said that the answer to that question is no? I mean, think about our own existences here. You can have robust health and not be happy. Know anybody like that? You can have all kinds of relationships and still be lonely. You can have millions of dollars and not be content. You can have every creature comfort and still be depressed. I think you get the picture. It's not the absence of certain things that makes heaven so heavenly. It's the presence of our God and Savior. I chose uh, Psalm 27 for this reason. What was it the psalmist was seeking? Was was the psalmist seeking uh, health and wealth? Was he seeking the absence uh, of suffering and sorrow? It's that verse 4, which long ago I, I committed to memory. What is it that he longs for? He says, one thing I desire, this is what I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. He longs to be in the presence of the Lord. And the upshot of that, if you look at verse 5, is that uh, to be in the presence of the Lord is to experience calm and safety. He says, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. That same idea is found in that 21st chapter of Revelation. It's just that we tend to gloss over that. Because we we immediately latch on to, you know, the absence uh, of pain and tears. And and depending on what's going on in your life, like as many of you know, I hurt my back last Saturday. And so uh, this whole week has been a week of pain. Uh, Getting out of bed in the morning, oh my goodness, is like Lamaze training. I'm getting out... (sighs) I kid you not, I kid you not, it has been really bad this week. Uh, for a guy who, who doesn't have a lot of pain, uh, really much, you know, somebody like, well, good for you. <laughs> uh, now you know what the rest of us feel like. And, and so, you know, to be pain-free, I was like, oh, what an interesting week in which to wrestle with <laughs> such things. Um, so you know, we latch on to those particular things or, or we're, we're at a funeral and, and we're grieving the death of a loved one and, and there's that passage in with a day is coming when death is no more and, and tears are no more and we're like, yes, that's what it's all about. But we miss something important in the process. It's that verse that immediately precedes uh, the absence of all of those things. Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. And, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. The psalmist was just looking forward to catching a glimpse of the beauty of God. And in John's revelation, it says God has something far more grand and glorious than we could ever imagine. It's not just catching a glimpse of him, but God himself coming to dwell in the midst of us. It says that they will be his people and God himself, emphatic. God himself will be with them and will be their God. And as he stands in our presence and we in his presence, then all the things that bring us heartache and all the things that cause us pain uh, begin to disappear. So let's uh, see how this plays out in today's text. Uh, 
Titus chapter 2. So take about 60 seconds, reread the text for yourself. And as you reread it, this is what I'm asking you to, to find. How many times do you see the word appear or some form of that? Okay? How many times does it appear? How many times does appear appear? <laughs> yes, t- two. Uh, verse 11, uh, for the grace of God has appeared, past tense. Interestingly enough, that, that word is actually epiphany, which kind of takes on a little bit uh, different context to it. Uh, so, so that um, for the grace of God has epiphany uh, that offers salvation for all people. And then verse 13, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing or the epiphany of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we've got appeared and appearing. So think of those in terms of Advent 1 and Advent 2. So Advent 1 is what? Okay, so Jesus' birth, what we're preparing to celebrate in Advent 2 is second coming. So Paul points out that we are living in between two life-changing epiphanies. That something has already occurred. That there has been the appearance of Jesus, the one born of Mary. And Paul says that as the bringer of a salvation for all people, what is it that Jesus has done? He hasn't simply appeared. So if you look at verse 14, first part, it says that he, Jesus, gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness. When Peter writes about Jesus and his redemption, he says he hasn't redeemed us with silver or gold, but with what? With his precious blood. And here Paul says that that he's redeemed us from two things. He's redeemed us both from the penalty of wickedness and the power of wickedness. That Jesus died the death that we rightly deserve and Jesus died and rose again so that we might live life differently. If, anybody, uh, if any of you have ever read uh, The Cost of Discipleship by, by Bonhoeffer and so forth, this isn't cheap grace here. He's not saying that whatever you've done, God forgives you and you can do whatever you want. Whatever we have done, God in Christ does forgive us. Amen and amen to that. Uh, But that doesn't mean that we are then free to do whatever we want. It's not cheap grace, but life-changing and transforming grace. It teaches us to say no uh, to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. So that is the impact of Advent 1. Christ has come. Christ has rescued us. And so it begins to, because none of us are yet uh, perfect in that regard, but it begins to change the way in which we live. And then he points to Advent 2, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the great glo- or the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what is our holy longing? It's for Christ himself. It's not primarily the absence of certain things, but the presence of our God and Savior. He is what makes heaven so heavenly. That Jesus, God himself, came from heaven to earth. That he might be suspended between earth and heaven on the cross. So that, and this is the good news of the gospel, right? 
Uh, Jesus experienced the absence of the Father. Father, why have you forsaken me that we might experience the presence of Jesus? And when we finally experience the presence of Jesus in its fullness, guess what? All the things that cause us suffering and sorrow in this life cease to exist. It's not one or the other. It's not the gift or the giver. That was true of the story, right? It was one or the other. Uh, You didn't get the giver, you got the gift. In this case, it's not one or the other. It's a both and. It's the giver and the gift. It's the absence of tears and it's the absence of pain because of the presence of Jesus who wept and because of the presence of the one who endured the pain of the cross for us so that he might purify for himself a holy people, a people that he calls his own. Among them would be us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would instill more in our hearts and our minds a longing for what shall be. And while the absence of death and mourning, tears and pain would be much welcomed. That is not what makes heaven so heavenly. It is to be in your presence. It is to enjoy uh, what you originally created humanity to enjoy, uh, the company of your presence. (coughs) We thank you that when paradise was lost through the fall into sin that you did not give up on humanity but made a promise that the seed of the woman would eventually come. And it is indeed in the fullness of time that you sent forth your son, born of woman, born unto law, to redeem us that we might enjoy the full rights as sons and daughters. And pray that you would keep us in the faith through all of the seasons of life that we might come to the fullness of that And still in us the hope of your appearing when all things will be set aright. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.